Okay, great. So uh, for all of you that have just joined, I'm Shannon Tiger. I am a director here at Viking and really excited to be invited by Jeff to join you all and talk to you about probably one of the most special itineraries that Viking has. And it happens to be in our homelands, uh, in Scandinavia, in Norway, up in that region. And we love to say that we're kind of the, the cruise line that services that region the best because our founder, Torstein Hagen, actually was born there. So this region is incredibly special to him. So um, Jeff has invited me because he came, he came to me in June and he says, Shannon, I really, uh, you know, we've had some time to think about what we want to do and we really want to do this special itinerary and I, I want to roll it out to um, my clients and folks in my area and whoever wants to join Ruth and I. And I said, well, wow, I can't believe you picked that, but that certainly is the best bucket list destination. And so here we are, uh, you know, four months later, five months later, and we're ready to present it all to you. So I just wanted to say hi, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jeff, and then he's going to turn it back to me. And um, I hope you guys all have your tea or your coffee or your after dinner drink. <laughs> and um, you're ready to, uh, to enjoy this really fantastic presentation. And and we hope, if anything, we motivate you and reawaken your your spirit and um, your your travel dreams here tonight with us. So, Jeff. Yes. Yes. So, so, my name is Jeff Sturman, and, and I am the owner, of, along with my wife Ruth, the best cruises and tours. And me, mo, many of you know who I am and have met us. But first of all, I want to hope everybody is healthy, staying safe, and I want to thank you for taking time to attend this uh, presentation tonight. For those of you who don't know us that well, Best Cruises and Tours, we've been in business close to 30 years, and we have sent over 110,000 of your friends and neighbors on vacations all over the world, and we've evolved to be one of the uh, largest volume independent travel agencies in the state of New Jersey. So we're members of the Better Business Bureau, we're rated A+, plus, and we enjoy top producer status with almost every single major cruise line and travel supplier. But our most important endorsements come from our thousands of satisfied clients. Our number one source of new business is our repeat clients and their referrals, and we are successful because of our dedication to customer service. We have two rules that we live by. Number one, we treat all our clients' vacations as if we were going, as if it was our own. And number two is we do not allow surprises unless they're good ones. So I don't have to tell you how this pandemic has affected all of us. That being said, our, we have kept our best cruises family intact and busy. And I know that all of us are looking forward to traveling again. Travel is an entitlement that we have earned. You've worked all your lives to be able to travel, see new things, enjoy new experience. And that has been taken away from us for the last 20 months. So these crazy times have resulted in me, Ruth and I actually, the supervisor, my supervisor. <laughs> yes. Yes. We, took, we took another look at our bucket list and we said, mm, what's, what, what's right up there? We've just lost 20 months. And guess what's right up there? The Northern Lights. Now I've been to Alaska exactly 37 times, okay? Some of you know I escort groups to Alaska. Some of you have been with me to, in Alaska. Every year for the past 14 years, uh, except of course, 20 and 21, I even went to Alaska in the winter of 2019. I spent 10 days in the winter and guess what? I never have seen the Northern Lights. So I got so excited when I realized that Viking, who is one of our favorite travel partners and the cruise line that has been named the number one cruise line in the world had an itinerary called in search of the Northern Lights. So we looked over the itinerary, it looked terrific. 
So Ruth and I are going in 2023, and we decided to open it up to our family of clients that have traveled with us before. It's on our website, but I haven't officially promoted it to the general public yet. I don't even know if I'm going to. So anyway, to talk about this trip, the Viking experience, and de some details, I will turn this webinar over to Shannon Tiger, who is our Viking sales manager for much of the Northeast. And once again, I thank you so much for attending this, and I will be back with you when Shannon is finished. Well, Jeff, I want to tell you, I am so thrilled that you've decided to choose Viking uh, for this really special, special itinerary. And also, I just have to give a shout out to Jeff and Ruth and everybody there at Best Cruises. What a fabulous partnership we have with them. Um, I have to tell you, we talk often. And if there's anything that I can say, this is a wonderful travel agency to not only work with, but to have the opportunity to travel with. I don't know. I mean, I may just have to figure out a way to come as a guest too. So uh, if I can get on last minute, I'm coming as well. Okay. And then you'll have the both of us. But anyhow, thank you again for your, your, um, your invite here and uh, taking this really special journey with Viking. So I'm going to start uh, with a short video only because it always moves me and it always sets the tone for me to be like opening my mind and realizing uh, there's so much of this world that we want to explore and um, it what what an opportunity this specific itinerary is. So here we go and let's just join this quick 60 second video together. When you really philosophize about it, there's only one thing you don't have enough of and that's time. Time is the only truly scarce commodity. And then when you come to that realization, I think it's very important that you spend your time wisely. And I think most of us have no regrets about things we did, but I think we can have regrets about things we did not do. More people have come around to this so what one wants in life is experiences. And that's a way of filling the time one has. And what better way of spending time than traveling, continuing to educate ourselves and broaden our minds. Viking was named a world's best again by Travel and Leisure readers. I hope that did exactly what I said it was going to do and um, awakened your mind and your travel spirit. So we are going to share our presentation here now. I'm back on camera, so hi everyone. So you'll see me come float on and off camera. Uh, again, I do encourage everybody to ask their questions. We're really excited to hear from you and it could be any question, no question um, will at least not go unattended and hopefully answered here today. So we are going to be discovering in search of the Northern Lights and truly this itinerary is exactly how it's worded. Um, this itinerary is the itinerary that you're going to be chasing after the Northern Lights. And it is a spectacular experience. Not only all the ports that we visit, but when that discovery happens, boy, you'll have your cameras ready and I've often heard that it's some a picture or a, a, all of the pictures that you will continue to reflect back on because something happens when you see them, and it's uh, it's it's just absolutely a phenomenon. And to be a part of it and to actually see it, as Jeff said, he he went many times searching for it. This is a really unique itinerary because we are going to take you all the way up to the Arctic Circle. So let's start really quick a little bit about Viking. Now you saw that we actually uh, started on the rivers. That was in 1997. We actually are operating over 60 river ships right now and we're on every single river. So including the Nile, we have two new ships on the Nile. Uh, we have four new ships that just uh, joined the Seine River where you actually dock right there in the heart of Paris. You can pretty much see the Eiffel Tower right from the ship and, and walk to it. 
Then we started the ocean cruising experience in 2015, and we have two new experiences happening uh, this year in 2022 coming online, which is the Mississippi, the Viking Mississippi, our first ever ship uh, on this side of the pond, as well as on the Mississippi, an incredible five deck modern uh, Mississippi ship. This is not a ship that uh, is a paddle wheeler by no means. Uh, it is absolutely fabulous. So we're taking delivery on her early, we heard, and we may have in, uh, uh, inventory opening up. So if any of you have already contacted Best Cruises and you wanted to book the Mississippi, but for some reason you figured out really quickly that it's sold out for 2022. Um, keep an ear and an eye out um, from Jeff because he'll let you know uh, if we do get some more inventory for 2022. And then also in 2022, we have Viking Expeditions, two ships joining us uh, this coming year, doing Antarctica, the Arctic, as well as the Great Lakes. So, hey, if you want to stay a little closer to home in 2022, you've got the Great Lakes, you've got the Mississippi, so you've got some great experiences. So believe it or not, folks, we are sailing more waters than any other cruise line. And it just means to you that we can bring you the Viking experience um, in so many different ways. We really can show you the world. And our, our way of traveling, our philosophy of traveling really is centered around one specific thing. And that thing is uh, being a leader in small ship cruising. So we started with our 190 passenger uh, Viking long ships. And then we went to 930 passenger ocean ships, which is the itinerary we're talking about today, going to be our ocean ships. And our river, uh, Mississippi River and expedition ships are just under 400 passengers. So what we do is we really um, focus on small ship cruising. We focus on uh, a cruising experience that keeps you in port longer. It's very destination focused. Um, and that is truly what this 13 day experience will be for you. Uh, as we search for the Northern Lights. In addition to that, a fun fact to know about Viking is we pretty much only market to North America. So you'll be traveling with um, North Americans, like-minded travelers to yourself, folks that really have an interest in history and art and culture. And when they travel, they want that cultural immersion. So when you hear me talk about these ports and you hear me talk about these experiences, that is really going to come to life because you're going to see how important it is for us to deliver deliver you these onshore experiences with local tour guides that are highly curated to make sure you're really immersing yourself in that destination. We offer a very inclusive product. So Jeff, at the end of the presentation, is going to share with you uh, the rates to join him um, from every category, from our penthouse veranda suites all the way down to our, um, our verandas. There are no inside staterooms on the Viking Ocean ships. And uh, I have to tell you, uh, each of those staterooms all have a veranda. So it's a great, great way to travel. We also include a lot. So we're going to talk about what's included. I'm not going to go into all the details, but in that fair, your government port charges and taxes are included, plus a lot of other things that you'll hear me mention. But the other thing that's included that's really important is the fact that we include one shore excursion for every port of call. So the message there is that you're getting a really amazing experience that has so much included from Wi-Fi to water to your meals. There's no charges for any additional alternative restaurants that we have on board. There's really not a lot of charges for anything else. It's just how you want to customize your trip with optional shore excursions. So doing other things on top of the included shore excursion. Now, really what separates us in the ocean um, landscape is the fact that we really um, are not everything to everyone. So in other words, we don't have casinos. And guess what, folks? You won't find children under the age of 18 on board Viking. So you're not going to have a ship here that has water slides and 
um, go-kart uh, tracks and uh, bowling alleys. No, no, there's no casinos. There's no big Broadway shows. There's no kids clubs. Uh, there's none of that. You're going to have a very relaxing uh, experience. It's going to be incredibly luxurious, but not pretentious, very comfortable. You're going to be dressing in country club casual attire. Um, even if you want, I see so many times folks wearing jeans to the restaurant by all means. We just want you to be comfortable. And you're not going to have a lot of lines because again, the ship is under a thousand passengers. Uh, and again, you have a lot of stuff included, including um, laundrettes. So if you want to wash your clothes, since this is a longer journey, you can do that at no charge. We have them available for you. You can also send your laundry out if you prefer to not do any laundry at all, which I don't um, blame you if that's the case. So uh, we don't even charge for the spa. So you really are getting a wonderful experience again without children. So in a moment, we're going to actually delve really deep into the itinerary. We're going to go day by day together. So you get a real good understanding of what transpires here while you're searching for the Northern Lights with Jeff and Ruth. Um, and one of the things that you're going to hear me talk about is that's a local life experience or that's a working world experience or this is privileged access. So I thought it would be probably beneficial to you all to actually tell you what that means, um, which basically means we're going to give you experiences that um, really bring you deep into the local life, whether that's learning about the indigenous um, Sami culture, which is uh, the Norwegian culture of the indigenous people of that region, whether it's riding a reindeer sleigh, riding um, with the Huskies. There's so many types of different uh, optional tours and uh, that you could take advantage. Um, we're also going to show you the working world of this region. Region. So we may, um, you know, go meet um, a miner, we may take you into the textile centers of Norway, and then there's privilege access and privilege, privilege access is uh, a, an optional experience that usually takes you behind the scenes, gives you something that no one else has experienced, a very special concert, or um, in some cases on other itineraries, going into the basement of museums. So the one thing that I want you to be thinking about, um, you're going to see a lot of really cool pictures coming up in a minute. And I want you to know, and Jeff, you can attest to this if you wanted to say she's right. Um, one thing for sure is Viking has all sorts of different types of guests. We have guests that are very active. We have guests that want to go at a slower pace. We actually have these things called quiet boxes. We want to make sure you put a little earpiece in your ear and that you can follow along at your own pace. You don't feel like you have to be on the heels of the tour guide. So no worries for you. Um, you may see something. You'd be like, I, could, I don't think I could ever do that. I may not have the stamina to do that. Don't worry because all of our tours are listed as um, as easy or moderate or uh, demanding. You know exactly what you're getting into. Uh, and we have something for everyone and you'll all get a wonderful experience. So you will be booking all of your tours prior to going. You'll be working with um, everybody at Best Cruises to make sure that you're on these terrific tours. You're gonna have this all planned out because you don't wanna wait. If you wait, then they're gonna be sold out for any of these optional tours. So take, you know, listen to me, maybe jot some notes down, maybe take a picture of the screen because I'm going to share with you some of the ones that are, you know, really stand out to me. The one thing that I will tell you folks is that this itinerary has more optional tours than um, probably what I've ever seen. So when I was putting together this itinerary for you and trying to handpick things that I thought would be really great to showcase, I realized, wow, this is more than maybe Viking Homelands. You have up to eight or nine different experiences to choose from, and that's outside of the included tour. Um, and by the way, I know so many folks that just do the included tour and they're plenty happy with that. They get their panoramic city tour. They, um, they like to relax on the ship. So uh, there's, again, nothing to be missed. So here's the itinerary. It's called In Search of the Northern Lights with Ruth and Jeff. <laughs> I added that because you technically will be searching for them with them. The itinerary goes from London to Bergen and it departs on February 12th. 
for 12 nights, 13 days. Of course, we're going to always encourage some pre or post, certainly a pre to make sure you can um, get yourself uh, regenerated and rejuvenated for your cruise because of the time zones and stuff like that. But there's six included guided tours and we're gonna be going to two different countries. So take a quick look at the day by day here. Um, now I have to tell you, one of the things that I love, and this is probably why Ruth and, and, and Jack decided to uh, take this adventure with biking, is that we actually have three overnights on this itinerary. That sometimes is unheard of. And where we do the overnights is exactly where you're gonna really be searching for those Northern Lights. So we're gonna start in London. Um, now, if you fly in and you use Viking Air, your air transfers are included. So we'll take you right from the airport to the ship here in um, Tilbury. Uh, or hopefully you're going to take my advice, friends, and you're going to book a hotel the night before or a two night pre with biking. And then this way you get to explore London a little. Um, and then you don't have what happened to me last week, which is uh, United Airlines canceled my flight at two in the morning, it was supposed to depart at 7.50 to Frankfurt, uh, and I actually missed my ship the next day. Uh, I actually had to catch up with the ship, and Viking was amazing and sent private chance transfers for my husband and I to catch up with this ship in the next port, but being that there's a sea day that comes right after this London piece, um, I would say uh, you'd have to take a plane to the next port. So I am telling you, you have to book a pre of some sort and, um, and then you start your journey. So we're going from London, we're cruising the North Sea, then we're going to Stavanger, then we're cruising again the Norwegian Sea, and then we're going to Bodo, Norway, and then we're going to spend an overnight in Tromso, an overnight in Alta. That day six through day nine is really where you're going hardcore chasing those northern lights. Then on day 10, we go to Narvik, Norway. We cruise the sea again uh, back to Bergen, Norway, and you'll have an overnight in Bergen. So an overnight in Tromso, an overnight in Alta, and an overnight in Bergen. You really can't ask for more on this itinerary, um, almost locking in uh, your guarantee to really see these beautiful northern lights. So Let's talk a little bit about what this looks like on the map, because I always feel like this is the best way to really showcase it. Here's London Town here in England. This is the North Sea to Stavanger, then heading up to Bodo. And then right here, right here where Bodo is, you're entering that Arctic Circle, heading to Tromso with that overnight here in Tromso, and then going to that farthest northern port here in the Arctic Circle in Alta. So you can see how you really have a great chance uh, to see those northern lights. And then we take you back um, down to Narvik here, uh, and then you um, head back down to Bergen. And that overnight in Bergen is going to be great for you. You're going to be so thankful because if you decide not to do the, uh, the extension in Bergen, you will have that whole day to really get out there and experience it. It's a lovely, lovely port of call. A lot of folks that go to Scandinavia uh, tend to say that Bergen is one of their most favorite ports of call. So do you want to talk a little bit about what to pack? See what I'm wearing? I actually wore this purposely for um, our presentation here today because everybody always asks what to pack. So we're just going to get that elephant out of the room and we're going to take care of this. Uh, basically, what you shouldn't pack is a bunch of bulky sweaters. So any Norwegian would tell you, yes, it's cold, but it's a dry cold, not a damp cold. And they're also going to tell you dress in layers. So picture a fleece like this, maybe a long sleeve shirt or a t-shirt underneath this, a winter coat over this, um, of course a hat, of course gloves, maybe a scarf or some sort of, um, you know, uh, neck um, uh, fleece uh, to cover your mouth. Uh, and then you're going to want, most importantly, very comfortable walking shoes that have a grip. So Timberland boots, 
uh, hiking shoes, those are going to be key to your journey. Don't worry, you don't have to pack a snowsuit. So we're going to talk about some excursions that you're going to say to yourself, like, I think I may need a snowsuit for that. We will, if you, we feel you need one, um, we will make sure that you have one. It will come with the tour. So I hope that eased your mind a little about <laughs> what to pack, because I know that always is on my mind uh, on, on how my packing so things <laughs> Um, uh, Shannon, Shannon yeah. just let's remind everybody that they don't have to pack tank tops and shorts. This is not a tank top and short <laughs> vacation, but it's, it's and I'm, you, we don't want to scare anybody as well. Now, I was in Alaska in the summer of 2019, and I did a glacier hike. It was minus 30 degrees. So we're just so we know. No, we're looking at temperatures as we go further north, I would say in the 30s and 40s, probably average. And as you say, it's kind of a, uh, uh, it, it's not the wet, horrible, snowy cold. So it's like a, and we had that in Alaska as well. It's, it, so just, j just a reminder, you, you can leave the tank tops and shorts home for this trip. Yes, but also you just reminded me something. We didn't cover this in the morning. There is an amazing spa on board the ocean ship and you have three ocean sea days and there is no charge for that spa. So you can continually go to that spa. You can go to it every day if you want. We don't care. You just have to make an appointment. And so pack a bathing suit. <laughs> so okay. Okay. Forgot to mention that. And there's also a retractable roof swimming pool that you're going to see as well. All right. So enough about this packing. Let's do it. Day one, we're starting in London. Super excited. I'm going to take myself off camera. You guys are going to see um, some really fantastic pictures and learn a lot about the ports of call that we're going to. So we're going to start in uh, Tilbury. This is a historic town on the north bank of the uh, Thames River. Uh, you're going to get a transfer if you do a pre with us uh, and you choose us for the pre from the hotel to the ship or if you are daring and you're gonna come in that same day from the airport to the ship. Uh, and then we're going to be able to um, give you an opportunity to settle into your veranda state room. You're gonna take time to explore the ship. And then um, you're going to maybe have an English tea in the winter garden if you like. Uh, but for the most part, you'll be on board uh, today. So if you did want to explore a little bit of London, definitely, like I said, uh, do that that uh, that two day pre extension. Now. One of the things I love about this itinerary is on day two, you're actually cruising the North Sea. So this gives you an opportunity to really get acquainted with the ship, get an understanding of the spa. The, there's a beautiful salon, beauty salon there. There's a wonderful area where we have uh, um, movie screens. We have HD performances of uh, the Metropolitan Opera. We have a gorgeous Explorer's Lounge, which you're going to see in a moment. Uh, but, you know, this is great. A lot of times you're in a port the next day and you feel like you haven't really got acquainted with your new home. So I love the idea that you're really going to learn all about the ship. There's so much history. There's actually, the ship is like a living art museum you download an app and there's all this great authentic art throughout the ship there's Mamson's deli where you get the best split pea soup or waffles in the morning so you're really going to love this opportunity to explore the other thing too is that the North Sea um, here, we're looking at this really interesting picture. I would recommend you spend time looking outside in the Explorer's Lounge because you're gonna see some of the most amazing history. The Vikings actually sailed these waters. Uh, this is how they established colonies on the Scottish islands and coastal France and beyond. And in the medieval days, the North Sea became a really busy thoroughfare for trade and um, this is how it was exchanged between Scandinavia and the, uh, the Mediterranean. But you'll also see um, these really cool, uh, important role that the North Sea plays for petroleum history and wind power energy. So that's what we're looking at here, where you see these uh, the wind power energy. Um, this whole region was really important to the Hanseatic League. So you'll learn a lot about that. We have resident historians on board, uh, TED Talks, really terrific 
music lectures. So you'll have a lot to think uh, about while you're cruising and a lot of learning to do, which is gonna be perfect to set you up for our next port of call. Here's the Explorer's Lounge. This is panoramic viewing, um, really fantastic for when you're cruising really scenic destinations like this. You'll see the staircase is made of glass. That's uh, Everything's done in a true Scandinavian design. So you're not gonna find Frou -frou here. There's no crystal chandeliers, but you notice um, that there's no unobstructed views, right? And so, or there's no obstructive views. So that is really key to the Viking uh, way. And when we sail, we have floor to ceiling windows everywhere. Now, uh, one of our operations guy told me once that when you're in search of the Northern Lights, you should always bring your jacket everywhere you go because you never know when an announcement's going to be made um, to tell you to go out on deck and start taking pictures. So just remember, carry your jacket and be prepared to, to see those northern lights. This is the winter garden where we serve high tea. It is a lovely space. It leads out to our retractable roof swimming pool, but you're going to get some amazing teas here. Over 300 different types of teas uh, for you to experience. Some you'll never see before. And then you could take a dip in this nice heated pool and heated area here as well while you're up in this Arctic cold region. But again, um, very, very uh, doable for sure. So our next port of call, um, which is technically our first port of call, is Stavanger, Norway. This is a really neat town. We're going to take you on a panoramic tour of Old Town Stavanger. Um, it is really incredible. It's beautifully preserved. It includes over 250 different buildings. And you can see these buildings right here. Now, this is accessible right from where we docked, which is in the heart of town, which is great. Lots of ease to get right in here and experience this 18th to 20th century architecture. It's considered um, the best kept wooden houses in Northern Europe. It was destined to be demolished, but then it was saved in the 1950s um, by the city's architect. Also to know about this area, it really focuses on Norwegian petroleum. Um, why? Because the country was in disarray. It was about to lose uh, everything. It was going bankrupt. And here in Stavanger, uh, they discovered petroleum and oil rigs, and uh, it actually saved the country. So you'll learn all about that in the museum. This is all the included tour with a local tour guide. Now, I told you that I'm going to mention to you some tours that you should really think about. About. The one that I want you to think about here while you're in Stavanger is the local life tour. This is a home visit. Um, so it's ca called the Stavanger home visit and you actually go into a uh, family's home and you learn about the traditions of the Norwegian culture, their way of life. Um, it is so personable and so intimate. You'll eat waffles, maybe do some shots of vodka. I don't know. You never know what happens here. Um, but hopefully it's just coffee and waffles, uh, but you'll learn all about how they um, have lived uh, so close to the earth here, and they're really grounded people, and it's a really authentic experience, and it's a great way to introduce you to all these ports that you're going to be going to, uh, to experience uh, in Norway, and I think it's a great foundation, so I highly recommend that. The other tour, if you're really looking to see some amazing fjords, I would say say um, the must thing to do would be pulpit rock cruise. Uh, so this is actually where you're going on to a local sightseeing boat with a local tour guided, a tour guide provided by Viking. And then you set off uh, into uh, the waters and you'll have uh, some amazing fjords that you're gonna be seeing. You're gonna be seeing some Stavanger vacation homes that are set on all these uh, little um, areas. This is a very popular vacation area. But as you cruise, you're going to gaze up to about a 2,000 foot um, rock formation, the Pulpit Rock. It is a very popular destination for hikers, and the rock formation actually juts out above the fjord, so your cruise is actually going to take you underneath um, the fjord, and uh, you'll see some beautiful waterfalls. It's just 
absolutely stunning, a wonderful way to actually see these fjords. Uh, and you also will stop and you'll go uh, to this little beach town and you'll experience some waffles and the cream and the sweet jam, which is the, um, the nice treat that Norwegians are known for. So a really cool experience. We also have so many other things for you to do here. Um, if you're a foodie, we have a taste of Stavanger experience. You can do um, Ford, go see some of the fjords by rib boat. So lots of other things. There's a fishing experience. So again, I will say it again, so important to really pre-plan how you want your uh, cruising experience to look. Now, we are having our uh, second sea day here where we're cruising the Norwegian Sea and we're making our way up to the Arctic Circle. Now, again, you'll have the opportunity to really enjoy the ship. I've already showed you some pictures and we're gonna do a video ship tour in a moment. But I will tell you, one of the things we pride ourselves on here and we know is important to you is enrichment. So throughout this journey on board, you will have so many opportunities to be enriched by um, information of this destination, even culinary experiences on board. Uh, it's really quite special. So uh, know that we always want to make to make sure that your experience here in Norway is also a, a reflected while you're sailing on board with regional dishes. Uh, and because this is our homeland, we really do it the best. Um, it's it's authentic Mamsen's Deli. Um, it's not something that we just tried to replicate. Uh, Mamsen's Deli is actually named after Torstein's uh, grandmother. And so all of her recipes are what is cooked in Mamsen's Deli. So on day five, we're actually here now uh, in a port and it's uh, Bodo. This is a really lovely city. It's home of uh, this beautiful, masterful cathedral. It lies just north of the Arctic Circle. So you are now approaching the Arctic Circle and you're going to start your experience um, of the Arctic Circle. This city actually was incredibly destroyed in World War II and it was rebuilt and that's what you're going to see today. But honestly, it was in um, just complete rumbles. And so you'll, or rubble rather, and you'll, so you'll see um, a lot of what that German bombing uh, took place and, and what had happened. Uh, and you'll learn all this through the included panoramic city tour. Uh, so there's a lot of history here, but there's a beloved cathedral. It's a fascinating concrete uh, structure that was completed in 1956. It's what we're looking at here. And it's done in this basilica kind of design uh, and we'll have an opportunity to go into the cathedral but we do have a very special privilege access um, optional experience if you want where you can go into this cathedral in the evening for a choir concert. I heard it is incredible, it's moving, and it really actually just takes you back uh, again, experiencing this culture in this region. Now we also have optional tours that you can um, go out uh, into the remote territory of Bodo and head north and actually cross the Arctic Circle. It's done through a scenic drive um, through the countryside and you'll hear all about the history of the, uh, the region. And you'll learn about the Aurora Borealis, which is what you're searching for, the Northern Lights, and the Sami, the indigenous people. So it's a, it's a great tour. Um, we also have an Eagle Safari tour. Uh, there's lots of museums. There's deep sea fishing excursion, uh, really quite uh, fun things, and even snowshoeing if you're really active. So I just wanted to share with you, those are just a few, but as I told you, this experience gives you so many options to really curate it to what your passion points are. Now on day six through seven, we're going to be in Tromso, Norway, and this is it. This is probably going to be um, your favorite port of call. I can promise you that. Um, if not, I'll send the next one will be. So 
picture this to be your favorite four days. Um, and it is a beautiful, lovely setting, Tromso. So you have a picture like we're looking at here, and I'm going to share some other pictures. Um, the, it is uh, spread over a scenic island surrounded by all these beautiful snow-capped peaks. It's right out of a postcard. And we're going to give you a great uh, tour that you're going to be able to learn all about this region and um, the beauty and the rich culture in the region. Again, the indigenous people, the cultures of those indigenous people. And that will be all a part of your included tour. So um, that's great. There's also uh, the world's northernmost brewery here. So if you like brew a uh, beer, you can do that. And this is also going to give you the opportunity for the Husky Sled um, ride, which is really fun to do. I know Jeff and I have talked about how he did this often in Alaska. Um, it's really neat where you can go out and uh, experience the Huskies and learn all about that and then take a sleigh ride. But regardless here in Tromso, you will start hunting for the Northern Lights. The best time to see them is at night. Um, and it's really quite a phenomenon. It's actually, there's three things that you need. You need clear skies and then you need um, the, uh, the, all the stars to align essentially. Uh, and I have a great video that I'm going to share with Jeff for him to share with you from a scientist on how this works. But it's a lot about these uh, electrical Pardon, uh, particles that are going into the Earth's magnetic fields and all of it has to happen at the same time. Uh, and so you're going to know all about this. Uh, trust me, you will become an expert on this. Uh, and one of the things to know is here with Viking is we will track weather conditions and we will make sure that we'll try to predict where they're going to appear based on the weather and the night skies. And if it happens that it's going to appear at night, don't worry, you'll be getting a wake up call because you will not have the opportunity to miss these. We're going to make sure that you're going to see them. So you see on this um, in Trumso here, we're going to take you on the uh, panoramic city tour. And what's really neat about it is you're going to learn that they have heated sidewalks that um, have been installed to keep the snow at bay. So how fun is that? Uh, and then also you're going to have the opportunity to really explore what they call the gateway to the Arctic, which is Trumso. Um, and it's really, Trumso is the starting point for many Arctic expeditions. We actually start our Arctic expedition here in Trumso. So you're gonna become your own expedition. Um, I go, go on your own expedition and it's really quite neat. Uh, and there's um, beautiful buildings here as well. Uh, you'll see some wood construction uh, that um, took place in the uh, in, in 1904. Uh, you'll, you'll learn all about the classic architecture. And then the highlight of Tromso is this amazing cathedral that is often compared to the city, uh, to Sydney's Opera House. Uh, this is the Arctic Cathedral. It is in this triangular shape. Um, and you'll have the opportunity to go in it if you like. We even have a private concert that takes place in this cathedral as well, uh, which really gives you that inside look to the venue. Uh, and then we'll have lots of other uh, experiences for you, home visits, if you want to do a home visit here, if you really loved it in Stavanger, you may want to do it everywhere you go here. Uh, we also will really show you a lot about the Sami people, the tents and all that. And uh, it's, it's just really quite amazing. And here are those adorable huskies. Uh, so we will encourage you, of course, to make sure you ride in a reindeer sleigh um, across the countryside and share fireside uh, stories with Sammy hosts, or you um, uh, go out and learn all about the Huskies at the Wilderness Center, and then also have an opportunity to, uh, to enjoy a sleigh ride with the Huskies. So there's so many optional tours again here, and um, you're just absolutely going to love the fact that you have that extra night in Tromso. Now on day eight, we're actually making our way to Alta, Norway, um, resting on the shores of the Alta Fjord. So you're going to have some really beautiful fjords that you're going to be looking at. Um, it truly is the gateway to some of Europe's most 
amazing natural beauty. This is where you're really gonna start feeling like you're in the Arctic. You're at the most northernest point here. Um, and you're gonna witness here some ancient rock carvings in the museum. It's part of the included tour. They're estimated to be up to 7,000 years old. So this isn't just about chasing uh, the Northern Lights. This is about uh, really experiencing a region that not many people go to and learning all about uh, the history here. So you'll have an opportunity to, to see uh, that at the Alta Museum. And then um, we're going to make sure that we uh, tour you through uh, that museum. You'll learn, uh, again, a lot about the history of this region. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to make sure that we uh, take you to uh, chase the Northern Lights here. So you'll have lots of ways that you can do that. There's also another uh, cathedral here. We also even have a fine dining exper experience with a dog sled opportunity. Um, we also have a couple additional optional shore excursions that are really interesting. Uh, and one of them is actually getting off the ship and overnight eating in an igloo hotel um, that you access by snowmobile. Yes, I did say that. Could you imagine yourself? Uh, sleeping in an igloo. Um, don't worry, there's lots of reindeer skin and uh, animal fur to keep you warm. Um, but yeah, it is actually a place where you will be sleep that is made entirely out of ice and snow. Again, also trying to chase those northern lights <laughs> uh, while you're doing this. So really kind of fun, right? But this is just to give you an idea of some of the really incredibly unique experiences. And then hopefully by now you'll have lots of pictures of the Northern Lights. Of course, it's not guaranteed because we are re relying on nature but, nature, but this is the place to see them if you're going to see them. And you're going to be now heading back to Bergen. We're going to be going to Narvik, Norway, which is um, home to a former Viking settlement. And it's situated on the innermost shores of the Afat Ford in. So again, you're going to see lots of fjords here. And it has the most amazing backdrop. Again, another postcard that is just picture perfect experience here. Uh, and um, it's amazing. It's encircled by mountains that in every direction uh, between the mountains and the glacier uh, that spills right into the water's edge. It is just stunning. So we're going to teach you all about this ice-free port um, and how it helped the town prosper as an exporter of Swedish iron. Uh, and we'll take you to the polar park and you'll have the opportunity to see Arctic wolves. You um, are really going to enjoy the uh, native Sami people in this region and uh, there's another opportunity for a husky ride through the Arctic landscape here. The uh, actual optional tour where you can visit with the wolves. Uh, someone once said that there was a picture of someone uh, kissing a wolf. Uh, so uh, I haven't seen that picture yet, but maybe that happens when you take a visit with the wolf. They must be very well behaved. Uh, there's a lot of World War II history here as well. And of course, um, some skiing if you want to do that, helicopter flight skiing uh, if you want to do that, uh, and snowmobile riding, which I heard is really a lot of fun if that's something you'd be into. So again, lots of optional tours outside of that panoramic city tour that we do. And then on day 11, we're cruising the Norwegian Sea and we're heading back to Bergen. And once we get to Bergen, here we are in one of the most majestic uh, towns. It's actually surrounded by mountains. There's over seven mountains and fjords and glaciers that surround Bergen. And I'm gonna show you a picture in a moment of, of the city in the evening. It is just stunning, but there is so much history here. We actually dock right there at Brygen Wharf, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You can easily walk off the ship. And remember, you have an overnight here. So how fabulous is that? Um, you should have enough time to see uh, a fair majority of Bergen and take part of some tours with us. Of course, we'll have an included city tour. 
um, which is really great. It's by Motor Coach. Uh, and the city was actually founded in 1070 AD, and it features so many historic sites. Um, the medieval King Hackens Hall, uh, the Rosencrantz Tower, beautiful wooden buildings that we're seeing pictured here. Uh, and um, it just was a bustling and still is a bustling fish market. Uh, it's got great 19th century um, wooden houses that you're going to be seeing, uh, and the scenery is just absolutely stunning. In the evening, you can be, um, you know, done with your, your panoramic city tour in the uh, early afternoon, have lunch on board, and then go back out, do optional tours. And then in the evening, if you want, have dine, you know, dine on shore. Um, it's your last dinner, uh, so that's kind of sad, but it's really worth it to kind of sometimes get out there and, and see these beautiful cities. And you will only have one night here if you choose not to do an extension. There's a binocular that could take you all the way up to the highest point here. I highly recommend doing that. Uh, and you'll get a view like we're looking at here. And the days are long in this region, um, sort of like it would be in Alaska. And the sky is said to illuminate in the evenings, um, regardless of the northern lights being there or not. And so uh, just just that in itself, you're going to get some really terrific pictures. So here we have uh, some really neat tours that you can do as well, where you can do some flight seeing over the fjords. Uh, we have snowshoe hikes. Uh, we have a, a lot of different types of heights, uh, hikes here as well. So lots to see and new. And just again, you want to make sure you pre-plan everything so perfectly so you have nothing to worry about when you get on board. Your pre or your post extensions, um, the two nights in London, I would highly recommend. And if you want, one thing that's really neat is going out to Oslo for two nights. Um, so you'll have that extra overnight in Bergen on the uh, back end. And if you want, you can look at doing that two night uh, experience in Oslo. I've heard it's actually really quite neat. Uh, and Edward Monk, um, he is actually our resident artist. Uh, so you'll see lots of his works on board are our ship and his uh, museum there is out there uh, in that area. And then um, there is, if you really wanted to see Churchill's Britain, you can do five nights uh, and kind of discover the life and times of Winston Churchill. So that's pretty neat. And uh, there's lots of uh, homes that you go to visit. It's, it's quite fascinating. So enough about that. Um, Jeff, I just want to show everybody a really short, uh, a, a quick short video of the Viking Ocean Ship. It's so much better than just looking at pictures. So we're going to do that. Now, everybody start thinking about your questions and, and start typing them in because after we show the Ocean Ship, Jeff is going to tell you all about uh, what's included in the pricing, uh, more details on uh, categories, and then we are going to uh, open it up to Q&A. So I'm going to take a moment and show you this quick video so you can see this beautiful Ocean Ship, again, just under a thousand passengers. Uh, and then we'll um, talk about how it costs to join Jeff and Ruth. So here we go. Let me start it and enjoy a quick short video of Vikings Ocean Ships. The All Veranda Viking Star, Viking Sea, and Viking Sky are the ships our river guests inspired us to build. With just 930 guests, these small ships are thoughtfully designed to enrich your journey in every aspect. And because of our size, we're able to dock in prime locations. We also use the latest green technology and all our ocean ships meet the strictest environmental regulations. Outside, our main pool with retractable roof is always perfect for a swim, even if the weather should be less than perfect. And we didn't just add an aft pool, we created the infinity pool to give you a sense of swimming right in your destination. When you yearn for serenity, the Winter Garden is the place to unplug and indulge in an afternoon tea service. Even the spa experience has been reimagined. In addition to holistic methods, we follow Nordic tradition with a treatment that combines an invigorating sauna with our remarkable snow grotto where snowflakes gently descend from the ceiling through chilled air to greatly improve the body's circulation. 
every destination has its own flavour, and on board Viking Star, Sea and Sky, you can taste them all. Our menus feature regional specialties made with locally sourced ingredients, along with always available American classics. There are multiple dining options, from relaxed and casual to our elegant restaurant. Perhaps you'd enjoy the chef's table for a specially prepared tasting menu complete with wine pairings. Or Manfredi's Italian restaurant for a classic Italian antipasto, delicious handmade pasta or tempting tiramisu. If a quiet private meal is what you desire, we offer 24-hour room service. And since the ultimate dining room is the great outdoors, Viking Star and her sister ships each offer more al fresco dining experiences than any other ships at sea. And then of course there are the accommodations. Great care was taken to ensure that every stateroom is an inviting home on the water. Designed with the understated elegance Viking has come to be known for. The choices range from comfortable staterooms to spacious suites. And every one has a veranda, so you're always just steps away from stunning views. Join us as we usher in a new era of ocean cruising. On board the ships of Viking, you'll enjoy ocean cruising reimagined while exploring the world in comfort. Great, perfect. So I'm going to share the presentation again. So Jeff can go through all of the uh, wonderful offerings. But I did want to mention really quick that I just got back from a Viking River opportunity. And I have to tell you, I had no problems whatsoever traveling outside of my flight canceling <laughs> due to mechanical issues. Um, but going through these countries, Viking does a fantastic job setting the stage for you every step of the way up to 20 days prior to your sailing. So you really, um, there's no stress. You just follow the uh, directions and boom, there you are traveling to Europe. So if anybody online um, is considering this 2023 voyage, that's awesome. But if you wanted to do something in 2022, but you've been kind of a little hesitant, I, I'm here personally to tell you that I maybe had some hesitation too, and it was an absolute amazing experience traveling to four different countries. I knew exactly what I needed to do, and the health and safety protocols uh, were amazing on river. And they're even better on ocean because we actually put laboratories on board our ocean ships. So we are doing daily testing. PCR testing, it's saliva-based testing for the crew as well as our passengers daily. It's such an easy procedure, um, no problems whatsoever. And I le leave this uh, last with one statement. I have never felt safer traveling on um, uh, traveling in general and traveling on a cruise ship. I have to tell you, we've set the standard with our health and safety protocols. And what's really neat for you is if you, if you do this 2023 cruise, they all will be in place. So whether COVID or, or not, it doesn't matter because now we have robots that sanitize the ship. We have um, the labs on board. We have uh, extended medical facilities, just things that um, we really are now uh, really, I, I'd say, uh, top top of the, the game. I don't know how to word it. Maybe it's getting a little late for me. But anyhow, Jeff, are you ready to share? Yes, with yes absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. So I, I just want to uh, tell everybody that Ruth and I are so excited about this trip. There's so many things that that fit with what we like to do, and we're pretty experienced travelers. But uh, Shannon touched upon it. The fact that we have overnights, um, I, it's so frustrating to me is as we travel and we travel on some of the big ships and you stop at a place that you really thought was interesting and... Um, Three hours later, there's a coach that, ha that you have to get to get back to the ship. So I love the fact of having three overnights where you can really explore the area. And then, as I said in the beginning, the Northern Lights are on my bucket list. Can you imagine 74 years old and I've never seen the Northern Lights? That's, that, and that's after 37 trips to Alaska. Anyway, when I, I wish I could... We, we, we're so excited about the opportunity. And as Shannon also mentioned, if they don't show up, it's still a great trip. So anyway, 
so if we're looking at the different categories here, let me just explain a little bit. At the lower part of the this little chart, the V2s and the V1s and the deluxe veranda, the DV4, DV3, there are actually other categories that go all the way from DV6 to DV1. All those are the same size. They're 270 square feet, which is a very, very nice, comfortable size. Uh, difference in the price has to do with their position on the ship. So uh, as you get into the higher categories, your, your, your position on the ship is, it gets to be more, to, uh, more of an upper deck and more towards the middle of the ship. But basically the V2 through DV series, and they go all the way up to DV1, all the same size. There are some amenities that the deluxe veranda gets. I, it, they they can can um, organize their uh, dinners a little bit earlier, and the, they can organize their short, short excursions a little bit earlier. I think there are binoculars that the deluxe veranda gets, but rooms are the same size. When we get to the PV, which is the penthouse veranda category, those are 338 square feet. So it's significantly larger room than the 270 square foot. And those are penthouse verandas. And the same thing, as you move up to the PVs, you, they're, the place on the ship where they're located are, um, it just gets better and better. And then the penthouse junior suites, are 405 square feet. And um, each category has upgraded amenities. So if we look, as you can see, the stateroom onboard credit, everybody in any room, we have a $100 stateroom onboard credit for them that you can use towards these um, optional excursions that Shannon was mentioning. Now, Shannon, you have to close your ears now. You have to put your, put your, your you can't hear this. <laughs> So loyalty points. <laughs> so um, we always have a, a loyalty program for our clients. We almost always offer discounts, sometimes in the matter of a uh, matter of onboard credit. And in the case of certain cruise lines, we do what we call a loyalty check, which we send approximately four weeks after you return. So what those loyalty points are is actually, you will get a thank you check from Best Cruises for the amount of the loyalty points, depending on the category that you go. So as you can see, the air arrangements are from $9.99. And um, uh, we do recommend, uh, Viking has a wonderful program called Air Plus, where you add a few dollars and then you can you can almost be in charge of your air arrangements. Um, and we, I can just tell you, we're excited, we're going. We had a, uh, this is our second webinar. We had a terrific response from our, our, morning, our morning webinar. And just, just to re remind everybody, this is the inclusions. So six included shore excursions. You have the lectures, you have the, the uh, spectacular, um, uh, the culture is, is it, this is, you know, we're not, we're not dealing with, uh, you know, with uh, like Shannon says, the foo-foo stuff, it's just spectacular. The food is excellent, the dining is excellent, and all these things are included. Now, um, so if we like what we hear, how do we get this trip organized? So Viking requires a $1,000 stateroom deposit. And that deposit is refundable up until 120 days prior to the departure with the exception of a $100 person administrative fee. So they, they require a $1,000 deposit and then anytime up until 120 days before departure, we can recover $800 of that. That's the Viking way Viking works. And um, 
if you're, Shannon, if you go to the next screen for our um, contact information, we are here. We are uh, excited to hear from you. This is a select group that we invited and um, we're here, we're available. I, I think tonight's gonna be a little bit late, but if you give us a call tomorrow, we can answer any questions that you haven't asked tonight and get you guys organized. We'll pick out a room and move forward. So I think I'm done. You are. You did such a great job describing that. And also the other thing is um, right now the offer with the air and all that is until November 29th. And it's, you know, of course, we can always look at um, what the next promotions are, but just know that we do have that deadline uh, for November 29th just because we change air promotions every uh, month and they usually get worse as the days go on. So, uh, so do note that too. So right now, I think for a lot of the promotions that you're talking about, right, Jeff, that, the, that we're looking at November 29th yes, as yes. the deadline? Yes, okay. at, this, at this point. So I see um, one of our, John, um, one of our uh, clients is uh, asking me, um, the days are long, wh when do you sleep? So, John, you sleep when you get home. That's when you're going to sleep. <laughs> That's a great one. Don't worry, we have blackout <laughs> curtains, um, and then we're just going to wake you up when <laughs> the northern lights appear. There was also in chat a question about uh, the seas. Are they rough? And we had that question this morning. And Actually, I'm going to put that right back to you, Jeff, because you had a great yes, answer. Yes. From, yes. Right from yes. the so, what, what, interestingly enough, one of the ways I found out about this trip was some of our clients had gone on it. And I didn't realize that we actually booked with one of our other uh, advisors. And so I, I, I went to them and I said, we're thinking about this trip. And I, I actually took them out to dinner. So, so I could, <laughs> and they said- You should have asked me to come. I would love to have been there. <laughs> they said, I, so this was part of my question, but I looked at the, uh, itinerary. So you're going through the North Sea. And what about the, how was the motion issues? So they said that it was absolutely calm as it could be. If you look at the itinerary, the first day is through the North Sea. And the rest of the trip, you're basically almost within sight of land. And it's very, very, very close. And, and, um, Kind of, if I can equate it to going through the Inside Passage in Alaska, it's it was, it was according to them, it was very very mild. Um, the Norwegian Sea, I don't, which we're going we're going to be sailing in, but very close to um, to to the uh, to shore. So the the couple of, couple of couples that we had said there was no issues. Right. Um, with the motion um you and know I, medication for that and and different things you can prepare yourself with and we always have our doctors on board that can help you too yeah um, you know there's certain areas that are that are difficult that we know are difficult in advance you travel a, around the cape in south america you know it's could be difficult if you travel the tasman sea going between new zealand and uh, australia you know it's possibly to be difficult this is we don't we we don't have any uh, this is not necessarily a difficult uh, exactly and this time of year that you and Ruth are going is um you know that best time uh you know Je February and March where the skies are clear they're at their clearest point so yes it is a you know slightly colder um but again a dry cold and you just layer up no big deal uh and you'll have a better opportunity because of the skies being clearer so it's worth it for that a uh, couple degrees colder uh to enjoy this region so I see that we have a very quiet audience. That's probably because we're all tired. Um, and uh, I know that uh, Jeff will reach out to me if he has any questions, but by all means, uh, thank you, Jeff, for having me here tonight. I hope everybody found this to be informative. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you. It was my pleasure. Yes, to, to yes and, and uh, absolutely. Any other questions you guys have, 
you know how to reach us um, if you uh, you know how to reach your travel advisor or you could call me anyway we're up I'm seeing some last questions okay what is the we have two questions okay let me take a look okay, I saw, okay. Yeah. what is the advantage of booking with you versus Viking Direct? Uh, Jeff's loyalty points that I didn't hear about. Yes. <laughs> and, and well, she, not only and that, not only that. First of all, the, if you call Viking up on this trip, the first thing you'll find out is that their pricing is per person $125 more. Okay, that's number one. Number two, there's no onboard credit. And number three, there's no loyalty points. Correct. So that's, and um, number two, if you have previous trips on Viking, uh, we absolutely can check. Viking does have a loyalty program. And yep. I, I am 99% sure that we can get it applied to the pricing on this. 99% sure. Um, Yep, you can. The only thing you can't would be referral discounts because um, it because it's a, considered a group because you're going with Jeff and Ruth. But other than that, I mean, the pricing is better because it's a group. They're at group rates that Jeff put together for you all. I would say the biggest advantage in, and why I'm going to try to get myself invited to this trip is that you get to go with Ruth and Jeff. That's believe me, that's not a, that's not <laughs> the biggest advantage. Anyway, we will have some. We do expect based on how many people we have to have some uh, some onboard uh, events as well. But yeah. the basic is is um, is there's definitely this price advantages and. Um, we, I'm pretty sure that we can get, uh, Viking has a, um, uh, I think it's a hundred a person or so forth for past guests. Yep. And um, I'm sure we can get that applied. Yes, absolutely. And if you, you've you sailed within the last uh, 12 months, uh, which it would be interesting to hear if you did, um, we did welcome back the world in June. So maybe you've sailed with us and did some of our other welcome back itineraries, then it would be a two, $200 from when you book. So, um, so you'd be within that window as well. But most of the time it's $100 per person, explorer society that we can add to your booking. Uh, but they're really, honestly, there's no advantage to going direct at all, whether it's a group or not. Um, we uh, believe in, uh, you know, not, we believe in our travel partners and we never undercut them ever. And so you, uh, they have the same exact pricing, except you, you're getting great service. You're getting, you know, someone there to help you through the process. And I will tell you, uh, Best Cruise is one of our best agencies. So they know how to book Viking. <laughs> they know the ins and outs, right, Jeff? Yeah. So I think um, we there's a question also about the uh, waters uh, and which we answered and average temperature, which we answered. And um, I think, Shannon, I'm not seeing any other questions. No, Let me that's just it. See if you know what they say. Okay. All right. Listen, guys, I we're thrilled that you took the time. Um, you know, uh, we appreciate very much your business and we, we're thrilled to have you as clients and uh, we're here, we're not going anywhere and um, we're very excited about what's going on in the world of travel for 22, 23 and we're even doing reservations for people into 24. There's time to get back to it traveling is. and to get back to um, seeing the world. So. Anyway, a, th a big thanks for your taking the time and uh, we'll look forward to and hopefully hear from you guys. Yes, hopefully. Thanks everyone. And I look forward to hearing you, you coming on board with us. The inventory is certainly, um, you know, going quick with everything because there's been such a lull in all of our travel lives. So definitely reach out to, to Best Cruises and thank you again, Jeff and Ruth and everybody at Best Cruises for having me. Have a great night, everyone. Okay. Good night, everybody.